Hi, everyone. It is May 7, 2021. This is an interesting site, not the B. Not the B. I'll show you the uh, front page. Okay, so they have a lot of videos, a lot of um, information. Some funny, uh, some very, very cute, and some really important. Very important. But I do like, I shouldn't say but, I do like the commentary, which I'm not sure if Not the Bee is Peter Heck's channel or not, but I do like his commentary. So I posted this on Odyssey. Um, the video of a man confronting a mainstream media reader, reporter. Very interesting dialogue that they have. But I've also posted other videos that I do hope that people come over to the Odyssey channel that I have, sign up, because... Well, this is where I'm posting information that's, well, critical. Critical. <laughs> this is just a compilation of uh, bizarre news from mainstream media, heartbreaking news about what's happening. But these videos here, a senior uh, National Health Service board member in the UK uh, speaks the truth about what is going on in the UK. Here, a National Health Service whistleblower nurse speaks out regarding what is taking place. Here, a doctor speaks out None of this do I feel comfortable saying on YouTube anymore. So, yeah. All right. Well, I did post this video here, and um, I just, I, I, I don't even feel comfortable playing the short conversation that this man had with this reporter in the parking lot. So, um, I will link below. You can check it out. But I do want to read the commentary of Peter Hex, because this is a subject near and dear to my heart. It's one of the most unimpeachable maxims about human relationships. Trust is everything. Once it's betrayed, it takes an act of God, literally, to ever fully restore it. The quickest way to obliterate friendships, workplaces, marriages, families, communities, societies. Betray that trust. Lie. And I've said this for nearly 12 years. You want the solution? Stop lying. Confront the liars in your life. Trust has been so obliterated in this country that I've, I've been talking to others and, well, I'm hearing more and more they can't trust anyone. So getting back to what Peter says, that's why whenever I'm asked what I think should be taught in journalism schools across America, my first and firmest answer is always the same. Honesty, integrity, and a sober explanation of the civilization, civilizational damage that results when those charged with conveying information to the public betray that trust. So, that commentary before taking a look at this parking lot exchange. An example of the public's complete mistrust and 
the journalist at the end of this video, well, he proves why he can't be trusted. Now, I posted this earlier. It is uh, just an excerpt of some of the parents speaking up at Beechwood uh, Board of Education meeting regarding a presentation which was in line with the critical race theory and critical race theory, and parents, mm, they're not happy about it. Now, a whole lot of people said, I don't listen to people wearing masks, or I can't hear anything. I can't hear. Oh, they're mumbling. Forget, you know, look. Turn up your speakers. It was literally, this woman spoke low for under one minute. Under one minute. And what she said in the very beginning was her name, her address, and she said that she lived in uh, Beechwood for 20 years, and I think then she was saying that she had two doctorate, doctorates, uh, a master's, and then she reads, oh, and she also said that she was just going to read what she had written out. Okay, so then she starts reading, and you can hear her fine. Now, if you're using a device that, you know, you're just listening to a cell phone, maybe you don't have speakers or whatever. I'm tired of the volume you know, hits, and some are hits. Like I'm doing something. The volume is absolutely fine on my end. If you're listening with these iPads or cell phones, then your volume may be not quite right for, you know, the videos, maybe they're right for other channels. I don't know. But, you know, you listen to a few minutes where you have to listen very carefully. Oh, my God. Listen carefully for a couple of seconds. Why are they wearing masks? Because it's mandated. Because they would not be able to get into the building without wearing a mask. And I guess they felt it was important to show up and speak about critical race theory. So all of you who get, oh, uh, wear a mask and you're just part of the problem, yes and no. Yes and no. We need more Americans to stop obeying and complying. When you do not have the support, and if you listen in this video, you know, several people are talking about how, you know, I'm here on behalf of all of the parents who are afraid to speak up. Why are they afraid? Because retaliation is the name of the game now in this country. Is it unfortunate for all of us that they're afraid to speak up? Yes. Do they need you know, to do some work on themselves to kind of uh, activate the courage that everyone has? Yes. But you want to start you know, criticizing these people for showing up, speaking out about something so incredibly serious that, and this is by far, you know, one of one of the most dangerous agendas that we have going right now in our country. So I post these videos in the hopes that parents who don't have the courage, maybe they will see others that do have the courage. Maybe that will, you know, help them to activate their own courage. You know, I'm amazed. I am so amazed. We are going down. We have uh, uh, this communist takeover, a communist takeover on steroids taking place. It's happening fast. And most Americans are just, even those who know, are just doing their life.
Hey. I, 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 look. Your stupid criticisms are really just, you put out an energy that we don't need because it is pulling. It's an energy that just sucks you down and we don't need it. Yeah, we talk about pampered, comfortable Americans. Ah, oh, they're mumbling. I'm not going to listen to this. Oh, I can't really hear. So I'm not going to listen. You can't, you can't try to listen? Really? Mask or no mask? All of the people who showed up to speak, this woman in particular, this man, he was great. So, you know, your annoyances deprived you of listening to people who said great things. Upper West Side, it's where I lived in Manhattan. <laughs> Look at this. This is a toy bookstore. And the latest edition is Pelosi. What are these, superheroes? Obama, Biden, uh, I don't know who this one is. Um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Kamala, AOC, please. Well, New York, New York, it's a hell of a democratic town. So buy the dolls for your kids. All right. Now, if anyone knows, not who this woman is, but the woman who comes in just a few seconds later, if you know, is if, if she's on TikTok, then I just have to wait for people to, you know, pass it along to Not The Bee or uh, maybe Twitter or YouTube or whatever. But I wish I could follow her because I'm going to show you some of these videos that she is posting and she is right on and she is fast in delivering the truth. The truth. For those of us who are not black men, imagine watching the news and seeing how people... Imagine being a black man and being told by some white lady with a microphone that you and the criminal on TV are one and the same because you look alike. Imagine being told by society that white people can be all that they can be, but you as a black man, the content of your character is completely irrelevant. You are the color of your skin and that is all you will ever be. Imagine being told you can't figure out how to vote because of the color of your skin. Socioeconomics affects everyone, but apparently you're not as smart as the poorest white person. Lady, I don't want to hate you. I'm a 90s kid. I grew up with you, so I know you're very talented. I understand your heart is in the right place, but you are everything you preach against. You're not helping. You're making things worse. You're causing more division. You're causing more fear. Statistically speaking, I am more likely to be shot and killed by my black elderly neighbor across the street than the cop who patrols my neighborhood. Statistically speaking, homicide by cop is very rare, but people like you find power in fear, so you keep it front page news. You don't have to be a white supremacist. You can be better. For those of who is she? Who is she? Oh, boy. All right because I can't find any information about who she is. Um, but she really, wow, is powerful. Here's another one. And I'm sorry about the volume because you know what? Each video is like at a different volume. So I forget to pause my video to check the volume. I apologize. Let me pause and check the volume on this video. 
Okay, I hope the volume is okay for everyone. I see this comment all the time. It's so dumb. So you're trying to invalidate the opinions of those in the comment section based on the color of their skin and then trying to make me feel guilty for speaking in the first place. Because that's all that means. So dumb. What you're implying is that I, as a black person, am supposed to think and speak a certain way and only a certain way. And yeah, that just doesn't fly for me. I do what I want. I say what I want, when I want. I don't do blind loyalty. I honor God and my mama and I pledge allegiance to the flag. If you didn't birth me, die for me, and if your name's not Uncle Sam, I don't owe you a damn thing. If you're uncomfortable or feel a certain way, then say that so we can talk about it. You don't have to resort to racism as a defense mechanism. Progress starts with conversations. Stuff like this is what causes division. Anytime a black person goes against the grain, somebody comes up with this cliche of a comment. Try to engage in the conversation instead of projecting your prejudice. If you have nothing intellectual to add to the conversation, then just scroll. I see this comment. I, I love her. I love her. I don't use that word very often, but man. Okay. I saw this on another um, site, and it said, our future uh, president. Yeah. Boy. Okay. Now, um, she said something about going against the grain. I don't think it's going against the grain. I just think that there's a whole lot of shadow banning. And, um, well, it never gets on mainstream media, that's for sure, of a whole lot of black Americans speaking exactly what she is saying whole lot from scholars and academics and um, it, it, all different fields. You're not going against the grain. We just have, you know, this exaggerated um, attention on a whole lot that aren't of your caliber being shown and glorifying the criminals. George Floyd, great. So, you know, when people aren't um, doing, you know, digging into the internet and all these social media platforms, they're missing an awful lot of what is reality instead of that manufactured reality from mainstream media. Well, we have another one. People are always like, get over slavery. Okay, get over 9-11. Let's just get some factoids out the way. Slavery went on for about 246 years, not 400. If you want to get technical, slavery only lasted in the United States for about 89 years. Slavery ended 156 years ago. This coming September, it'll be 20 years since 9-11. You seem young, so I'm guessing you were either too young to remember 9-11 or you weren't born yet. I was 14 when I watched people jump to their deaths and the towers collapse. 9-11 didn't just happen to the people who died, it happened to all of us. And using 9-11 in a joke is just not... And it's not so much get over slavery, it's stop using an event you never experienced as a crutch. And if you feel like you're suffering from generational trauma, then go see a therapist before you damage the next generation. It's not oppression when you shackle your own feet, and no one's holding you back when the key is in your hands. I can't get to the door if I'm holding onto the wall, and I can't take the wall with me. When people say get over slavery, this is what they mean. Ah! I cracked up when she said, <laughs> and if you have trauma from slavery, go see a, go see a therapist and don't traumatize the next generation. She's good. So, leave a comment below, please, if you know who she is. Washington School Board President owns an all-ages sex shop. Okay. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. After a first grade class in Washington was read the book, I Am Jazz, parents in the Bellingham School District were outraged. I Am Jazz is the children's book written by Jazz Jennings, 
telling the story about her transition from boy to girl as a small child. Oh, boy, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one parent sent a screenshot of their email conversation with the first grade teacher to Young Americans Foundation. Let's see. Gender dysphoria is a diagnose listed <laughs> in that fictitious Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders that is the Bible of psychiatry and psychotherapy. They even have math in there. Yeah, DSM. I don't know if it's five or six or four, but it's in there. A math disorder. It's a mental illness. So, writing to Jennifer Miller at Bellingham Schools. Yes, I did read this book. It is available in our school library as part of our equity, diversity, and inclusion collection. Well, a whole lot of parents were speaking out about this, and this woman actually spoke the truth about what these kids are learning, and it ain't pretty. And, oh, one of the school board members took exception to what she said. Oh, man, we're in trouble. We're in such big, big trouble. So, yeah, part of our equity, diversity, and inclusion collection. As a district, we are working hard to support all members of our school community and promote inclusion through understanding and compassion. Hmm. Okay. A parent wrote, did you read this book to first graders today? Yes, we sure did. First graders. When the school administrators and school board both failed to respond to parents, parents' complaints regarding the book, YAF discovered that the school board president also happens to own an all-ages sex toy shop. You cannot tell me. Please tell me. Come on, Washington. Tell me that this is not the school board president. Can't be the school board. Please. Wow. Jennifer Mason, owner of the Wink Wink Boutique. Here's a local news article link if you want to read more about it. Oh my God. She has been the school board president since 2017 and in 2018 she opened her sex shop. Described for all ages and not creepy. Well, it's pretty friggin' creepy to me. Well, what are you going to do? Parents got to show up. Got to get rid of these school board members like Jennifer. Something is very wrong here. The problem is a whole lot of Americans don't care. A whole lot of Americans just don't want to know. A whole lot of Americans don't feel that they have the power to do anything. Then a whole lot of Americans are scared to show up. That's why it's important to listen. Even if it's hard to hear them, listen carefully. Because the ones that do show up, they need to be heard. They deserve to be heard. 
and circulating videos like this may give someone a little bit of courage to get out there so that the children can be protected from people who clearly are not qualified to hold their positions because this kind of information to a first grader is age appropriate inappropriate sorry inappropriate age inappropriate have I corrected myself age inappropriate but this is what the school board president is I don't even know how to address any of this because it's so, it hits you in the face, the obviousness that this is wrong and that you actually have to have some kind of reasonable conversation with your fellow Americans to kind of like, hey, you don't get this? Like, uh, you see this as okay? That, to me, means that I'm talking to somebody who's mentally deranged. Mentally deranged and a danger to children. What do you do with that? You'd, you'd like to be able to escort them to the nearest psychiatric institution, but we're living in one. So, BLM founder is happy that her book gets compared to Mao's Little Red Book, BLM. Okay, Patrice Cullors, who said, I'm a trained Marxist. Now, we still have these BLM Antifa riots going at Portland. How the hell, how do, how do you, how do the residents live in Portland? It's, a, it's the riot city. But, okay, Patrice, who, yeah, um, somehow managed to purchase four homes and lives in a predominantly white area now, Topanga Canyon, California, buying... A $1.4 million home? That's, that's the leader, the Marxist leader for you. That's right. They want everyone to be impoverished so they achieve their equitable results. But they won't. All right. comes out publicly, states she's a trained Marxist. Did I say, do you not know that she's one of the co-founders of the BLM? Okay. So, this I just saw. I was at the, our publication. Sorry. I was at the, our publications table today. And I was speaking to this uh, young person from Arizona who's trying to fight uh, SB 1070. And I was, he, he, he grabbed a book and he said, it's like Mao's Red Book. And I was like, man, that's what I was thinking. And it was just really cool to hear him make that connection. That was at the art. Wow. 2010. The Strategy Center. Really cool. Wow. Uh, any of you in the Black Lives Matter movement, you might want to check out what Black Lives Matter is all about. You might also want to delve into a little bit of history to see what Mao did to bring in communism to China. I think Mao as uh, one over all the dictators, the amount of people killed when that communist revolution finally 
came about in China. How many? Close to 100 million? And then, you know, if you do maybe look into the history, all the useful idiots bringing about their communist revolution get shot in the end or in the beginning of communism or at the end of the freedom or whatever. Here she is. <laughs> oh, my book. Oh, wow. Yeah, I thought so, too. It was like Mao's Red Book. This is who people are out on the street. This woman who has not helped her black community, but she sure has enriched herself. Man. How about this? I'll leave you with this. Since it is Friday night, and I want you to have a good weekend, but... What? What? What's going... What's wrong? No problem. I cracked up. I cracked up. A four-year-old accidentally ordered $2,618 worth of SpongeBob popsicles from Amazon. Wow. Well, who knows? Now, the reason why this does not sound incredulous to me, when I was a kid, I used to flip through magazines and then send away for free things. And once it was to, I don't, I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but my God, I was probably, I don't know, eight or nine. I sent away to become an airline stewardess. <laughs> and what sending in that um, information or whatever it was, but Saturday morning, on a Saturday morning, a knock at the door, and there's a representative from the airlines standing there. Okay. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was like a recruitment for airline stewardesses. So, could this be possible? Yeah. <laughs> but he sure does look happy. And he is so cute. All right, guys, look. It's a hard time. It's definitely a hard time. And I don't take lightly what's happening. The loss of freedom is a big deal, and we're losing it. We're losing it. And we've got to pull one another up. So I really wanted everybody to hear and yes, I understand that, you know, the the first maybe 40 seconds, it was hard to hear, but then it was fine. So, you know, we've destroyed our own lives as adults. But when I see children getting abused by adults, I really have a hard time with it. And when I see sane Americans stand up, speak out, when so few are, I think it's really important
to try to put aside what kind of irritates you and just listen. Listen to them. They deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. 